We are slammed in today's episode. A leaked photo gives us a pretty good look at some of the new next-gen cars. Adam Stern reports that a real-world street course race in downtown Chicago is currently being planned. CBS wants more auto racing in its lineup, and we're gonna go through the mail y'all have sent me in the past week. It's a full show. How's it going, y'all? My name is Eric, and welcome to Out of the Groove. Lots to talk about today. Thank you all for tuning in. If you're not already subscribed, make sure you hit that subscribe button and ring the bell so that you do not miss any future uploads. So much is happening, so much is changing in the world of NASCAR these days. You're not gonna wanna miss a thing. And like I said, stay tuned to the end of this video because we will be going through some packages y'all sent recently. Who knows what kind of NASCAR surprises await inside. It's show and tell Tuesday, but we've got a lot of news to cover before we get to the fun stuff. Let's begin by talking about the leaked photo that has been making all the rounds on social media this morning. I saw it for the first time last night. One of y'all actually sent it to me without any sort of context, and I thought to myself immediately, oh, this is gonna be all over the internet when I wake up, isn't it? Sure enough, he's ridden the viral wave of NASCAR social media. I'm not sure who originally took the photo. I'm sure NASCAR would like to know their location. <laughs> but here's the photo that first popped up on Reddit that everyone is talking about. It appears to be a Chevy Camaro and a Ford Mustang next-gen car in probably the NASCAR studios. A little sneak peek behind the curtain right here. Of course, NASCAR is set to reveal all three of the current manufacturer's next-gen cars and the looks and, and even more details on May 5th. But here we are about a week or so early getting a pretty good look at the Camaro and especially the Mustang. Like the Camaro, I mean, it's just got a generic next-gen paint scheme on it. Not a whole lot to take away there. No real surprises. It just, it looks good. It looks like a Chevy Camaro NASCAR car. Great. But the Ford Mustang there kind of in the background, that's the one that got most people talking. That's the one that I took most notice of because that does not look like a Gen 6 NASCAR Cup car. Like, I, I know the next gen is supposed to be a new generation. I know it's not supposed to necessarily look like the Gen 6, but that that looks very different than what we see on track today. Like when I first saw that car, it reminded me of like a Trans Am Ford Mustang looking car or like a super late model with Ford Mustang stickers on it, like very wide and low. Like they took a Gen 6 Cup Series car and just squashed and stretched it a little bit, you know, in Photoshop. It looks bad. Bad in like a good way. Like, oh, that's confusing. It looks good. It looks really, really good. It does not look as upright as, you know, the last two generations of Cup Series cars have been. This looks closer to a Gen 4 than a C. T Gen 5 or Gen 6 car. A few people pointed out that the front end design of that Ford Mustang actually looks kind of like the Shelby GT500. Now, I should have said this at the very beginning, but this is a leaked photo. We don't know where it came from. It could be fake. It looks pretty legitimate. People are taking it very, very seriously, so I'm almost certain that it is a real photo of real next-gen cars. Of course, we are still a week away, and I don't know when this photo was taken. This photo could have been taken a month ago, for all I know. I'm sure the cars could possibly look a little bit different when NASCAR rolls them up on stage in a few days, but you know, this looks pretty legit. This is a good idea of what the next-gen car, at least the next-gen Mustang, and maybe what the Camaro is gonna look like next season. No leaked Toyota photos, but again, that Mustang definitely looks different. It looks good but it does look different than the current Gen 6 Ford Mustang. Let me know what you guys think. I mean, it's first impressions. It's, it's not like we're able to really learn that much by just looking at this kind of you know slightly blurry photo here. I'm still very much looking forward to the official announcement on May 5th, where hopefully we'll get even more you know specs, more details about the inner workings of the car, what kind of rules package type things, like the very basics, like what's the spoiler gonna look like, what's the splitter, et cetera, et cetera. I'm hoping we get a lot more of those details, a lot more of that kind of information May 5th, but early on, that Mustang, looks different and it looks pretty cool. Again, it looks bad, but in a good way. That's the best way I can phrase it. All right, Adam Stern from Sports Business Journal this morning dropped a spattering of bombs on us. Let's start by talking about the big story this morning. Adam Stern reports that NASCAR is exploring running a real life street circuit race in Chicago in the coming years. The earliest it would happen is 2022, but planning is still in the early to middle stages and it's possible the project could get delayed. Ever since NASCAR announced a few weeks back that the iRacing Pro Invitational Series would run at a virtual Chicago street course that iRacing actually worked with the city to scan last year. The idea of a real world NASCAR Cup Series street course race at Chicago specifically has begun to look more and more like a real, real possibility. But this is the first time we've heard it reported that planning is actually in, as Adam Stern says, at the early to middle stages. They might be making some progress, actually. He does say that there's a possibility there'll be a street course in Chicago on next year's schedule. I would be very shocked if that 
that it does in fact happen. I have a feeling it will take at least another year to fully flesh this out and make sure it's done right. Especially since the street circuit that at least is being run for the Pro Invitational, the iRacing race, is a completely new street circuit that I don't believe has ever been run by any series ever. It'd be a completely new task, a new project for NASCAR and the city of Chicago to undertake. So I think it would take more than just a few months to fully iron that out and plan those logistics. But either way, this is exciting stuff to hear that NASCAR is taking the idea of a real world street course race very, very seriously. They believe it's feasible. A major city like Chicago seems to believe it's feasible and they want to be a candidate for it. That's awesome, man. Like, you know, street courses and other motorsports have produced great racing and then sometimes they don't produce great racing. And I think the current NASCAR Cup Series cars like the Gen 6 or especially like the Gen 5, I don't think those cars would run most street courses well, you know, the track is narrow, a lot of very tight turns. These Cup Series cars don't handle tight turns and narrow quarters as well as, you know, like an Indy car or obviously a Formula One car does. But every test we've seen so far shows the next gen car is a much better road course car. It's built to be like a sports car. It's built with road racing and short track racing in mind. I think the moment the next gen car hits the track, a street course race becomes much more realistic for the NASCAR Cup Series. I'm sure NASCAR for marketing purposes really wants a street course on next year's schedule because Think about the marketing. It's not only a new car, but it's a completely new style of racing. I mean, sure, it's a road course, but a street course is a little special. It's a little different. That would be a huge marketing opportunity if NASCAR could both introduce a brand new car and a completely brand new type of track in the same season. NASCAR, I'm sure the TV networks and partners would love that a ton. Is it super realistic? I don't want them to rush into this and the event to be a complete disaster. That would be horrible, but it is really promising to hear that talks are in the early stages. You all know me. I talked about this last month. I I love the idea of bringing NASCAR to the people. Most NASCAR tracks are like an hour or further away from a major, major city. You have to actively seek out a NASCAR race weekend. You have to know what's happening and plan your whole weekend or in many, many cases, drive from way out of town, get a hotel, whatever the case may be, camp out. It's work to go to a NASCAR race these days. There's a lot of work involved. Bringing a race to the people where naturally over 100,000 people will probably see your product just without even trying. They're just in downtown to you know hang out and oh there's a race happening let's go watch this is a can't miss opportunity if you can bring nascar to a major major city and hopefully put on a good show can't miss that's a huge marketing opportunity for nascar i'm 100 for it i don't want to see the schedule flooded with street courses like say they do run chicago next year and it's a success i don't want to see five street courses on the 2023 schedule that would be too much too soon keep it special much like bristol dirt or dirt racing in general limit it to one maybe two races a year keep it unique but make it super freaking awesome. I love this idea, I hope it works out. Let me know what you guys think down below of a downtown Chicago street course race. Think it's realistic? Do you think it happens next year? I think it's happening. I don't know if it happens next year, but I think it's happening. NASCAR is probably gonna want a multi-year commitment from whatever city they do run a street course race in because again, setting up a brand new course temporarily for just a one-off one-year event, I don't know if from a business standpoint, the cities or the NASCAR itself would, would like that. It's gonna take a long year, a multi-year commitment, I think, to make this happen. That's probably where the planning is gonna be held up the most. Anyway, the iRacing event will be June 2nd on FS1. We'll get a little sneak peek at what a Chicago street race may, may look like, so very excited for that. Another tweet from Adam Stern this morning regarding TV networks and their potential involvement in motorsports. Adam Stern also tweeted a quote from CBS Sports Chairman Sean McManus, and he told Sports Business Journal, if auto racing rights come up, we'll take a good look at them. The advertiser interest is usually pretty strong. So if it works from a business standpoint, we would definitely take a look. And Adam Stern mentions that IndyCar's current contract with NBC ends after this season. So I have seen a lot of members of IndyCar media and fans from the IndyCar side, things really talking about this. Could CBS be a huge player? Could they pick up the majority or all of the IndyCar schedule next year? I think that's certainly a possibility. CBS is making a pretty big play back into the US motorsports market this summer with the Superstar Racing Experience. And they announced earlier this month that their veteran broadcast team will consist of Alan Bestwick, Lindsey Zarniak, Brad Doherty, Matt Yoakum, names, voices, faces that IndyCar and NASCAR fans alike are very familiar with, a very talented group that CBS has acquired for the SRX. Now, talking about IndyCar again for just a moment, they are in discussions, ongoing discussions right now about 2022 and beyond. NBC is still in the mix, trying to extend their deal with, the, with IndyCar. CBS, it sounds like, is in the mix, as well as potentially some other networks. Now, from the NASCAR fan, from NASCAR's perspective, NASCAR's contracts with Fox and NBC are not up until 
until 2024, after 2024. So we still got a few years, but this is important to monitor because depending on what IndyCar does, what network they land on, how that network chooses to promote the product with streaming on the rise, I think NASCAR is likely keeping a very close watchful eye on how IndyCar's new contract gets negotiated and who steps up, who doesn't, because that could very much indicate where NASCAR will end up after 2024. Like Fox, Fox has covered basically the first half, at least of the Cup Series schedule for more than 20 years now. NBC has been on and off, but their latest run with NASCAR has lasted since 2015. It'll be basically a 10 year deal by the time it expires. Definitely possible that Fox and or NBC end up getting replaced by a CBS or someone like that. So it'll be interesting to watch CBS clearly is taking the U.S. motorsports world seriously if they're hiring Alan Bestwick, Brad Doherty, Matt Yoakum, veterans, very professional, very talented TV personalities. That tells me that CBS is serious about getting back into the U.S. motorsports game once again. So we'll see how this works out. We'll see if what their involvement with IndyCar may or may not turn out to be and how might that affect NASCAR in a few years. Important to keep an eye on that, which is why I'm mentioning it here today. There's more we could talk about, but I might have to save it for an episode tomorrow because we've got to get to the mail. It's Tuesday folks. So here at Out of the Groove, that means another edition of Show and Tell Tuesday. Again, a huge thank you to everyone who has sent letters, packages. I really appreciate it. If you want to get in on the action, check out that P.O. Box address down in the description. Let's check out this first one from Bradley in Florida. Oh, something's falling out already. Oh my goodness. Yeah, Matt Kenseth Bayer Bush Series card. That's awesome. I need to check the note first, but that's pretty cool, especially because Bayer and many of their brands have actually become sponsors of Out of the Groove. This is awesome to have this die cast now. That's super cool. Oh, Bradley sent a bunch of different stuff in here. Oh my. Newspaper here. I don't know from where. Racing Extra, your complete guide to Speed Week 2004. Oh my gosh, you got IROC on there. Whoa, old school newspaper right here. What's going on? What is happening in 2004? Goodyear defends products, says tires aren't softer. Ryan Newman wins the IROC race at Daytona. Carl Edwards doing some backflips, yeah. Daytona Beach News Journal. Man, I wish I lived in Daytona Beach. Do they still do this paper? Do they still give out like, or, you know, distribute newspapers like this? Is that Adam Sandler? No, but it kind of looks like him. Look, they did a fan of the day segment. I wonder where this guy is now. Tom. Tom from Connecticut. Tom, if you're still out there, I hope you're still... He says he's a Bobby Labonte fan and that his least favorite driver is Kurt Busch. This is 2004. What if he's a Kurt Busch fan today? That'd be funny. I'll be reading through the rest of that. Oh, he also sent Chase Elliott All-Star Diecast. Heck yeah, from my friends at Lionel. I actually don't have any of the All-Star Diecast with the slid back numbers or anything, but this is cool. I was at this race in person, got to see this car win. Oh, heck yeah, Matt Kenseth Crown Royal Hero card. That's cool. Oh, and then Bradley sent some trading cards as well. These are all in sleeves. Ooh. Oh, I like this. It kind of looks like a deck of cards, you know, or how a deck of cards would look. What else? Dale Earnhardt, whoa. The three car, really neat. What else is in here? Some Matt Kenseth cards from a wide variety of eras, but look at that holographic, the reflection. These are so cool. Thank you for this, Bradley. Got a box here from Deb in Michigan. All right, there's a note. Hey, Eric, hope you like this. I found it at a thrift store. Oh, oh, what is, th what the? Hold the phone. Richard Petty Racing Trivia Game. Whoa, whoa. Is there like the full game in this like box here? Hold on, I gotta try this out. Oh, well, there's bubble wrap first. Oh my goodness. Oh, it comes with the rule book and everything. A score card. Oh, Richard Petty Racing scoring track. Oh my God. It's the full game. Oh my gosh. All the different questions, a pencil, even dice. How many? This says a thousand questions. All right, I'm trying one of these. I'm not cheating. I swear. First question. What is Dale Earnhardt's favorite movie? Cool Hand Luke, Days of Thunder, or Great Escape? Uh, the only one of those I've seen is, is Days of Thunder, but that seems too on the nose. I feel like Dale Earnhardt, that's like, it's too obvious of a choice, but I'm gonna go with it anyways. It's the only one I've seen. What are the answers? Are they on the back? Cool Hand Luke. I should probably see it. Hey, if it's Dale Earnhardt's favorite movie. You, we gotta see it, right? Watch Party, okay. This is crazy. I'm gonna have to find people to play this, or maybe we'll play it on a stream sometime. Thank you for this, Deb. This is... This is vintage, this is cool. Got an envelope here from Jeremiah in North Carolina. There's a whole folder in here, Jimmy, Jimmy Johnson. That's cool, oh yeah, oh yeah. Yeah, I'm gonna keep my important tax information in the Jimmy Johnson folder, I'll make use of that. Also a Trevor Bain black Advocare diecast, and check this out, Bubba Wallace the McDonald's bacon car from like a year or two ago. Definitely an interesting paint scheme, but a memorable one, so thank you for these, Jeremiah. Going on the shelf from George in New York. What is in here? Goodness gracious. Who is this handsome man? Oh my gosh, it says Team NASCAR. Who, who is this? What the heck? 
I love this. I don't I don't know the character. This isn't this isn't Digger. I don't think the you know the Gopher from Fox. But I don't. I'm not familiar with this mascot. Who is, who is this man? Can you take his? You can take the hood off. Oh, he's got ears. He's got hair. Oh my gosh, this is crazy. All I can think of right now is the wet teddy bears commercial that is ingrained in my mind during NASCAR races, which sucks. This is cool. He has a new home here. I, there was no note in the box. I don't know what what I don't know where he comes from. But if anyone knows in the comments, let me know. I like this guy. As per usual, I've saved the biggest box for last. Like it's Christmas morning. This comes from Dave in Connecticut, also known as Firebird Dave on YouTube. He has stuffed this box full of some goodies. Let's see. Oh my gosh, it's just die cast. Chase Elliott, the Dunited States car. I I'm gonna take this out of the box. Oh my gosh. Whoa. <laughs> I forgot how cool this car looks. With the silver number on the roof, this looks so good, whoa. Oh my, this is fantastic. Thank you so much. And there's there's two more in here. Daryl Wallace Jr., the Aftershocks car from 2019, right? Oh yeah, it always says on the box, 2019. Let's take this one out too. Oh yeah, I love the orange. Oh, oh my, and it's signed, what? An orange marker? What, this, this looks too cool. Whoa, this is a cool looking car by itself. One of the few times where the orange roof number actually matches. This is amazing, holy cow. Goodness, I never know what kind of surprises await on Show and Tell Tuesday. There's still another box in here. Firebird Dave woke up and chose Chaos today. Another Bubba Wallace. This one's the uh, uh, the Victory Junction gang car, classic. Oh, and this one's signed also. What, bro, Firebird Dave, you just got signed cars laying around your garage? What the heck? This is so awesome. Dude, thank you so much. <laughs> This is really, really cool. These things are just fresh, they look brand new. Oh my gosh, wow. Well, quite the surprise to end Show and Tell Tuesday today. Thank you, Firebird Dave. I keep calling him Fire. Dave from, whatever you wanna be known as, Dave. The Dave with the move of the day. This is really, really cool. Thank you so much. Thank you to everyone who sent things to the PO Box today. What? What a wild and surprising haul today. A lot of interesting stuff in there. Really appreciate the support. That's gonna do it for this episode. Thank you all so, so much for watching. Again, make sure you're subscribed so you do not miss any future episodes. As per usual, thank you to my amazing Patreon supporters. I couldn't do this show without your tremendous support each and every month. I can't get over this dude. I, I wanna know this guy's backstory. I mean, I could probably Google it, but I want you guys in the comments to help me out. Who is this? Why is this? I love it. <laughs> Thank you guys for watching. I appreciate your support. I will see you all in the next episode. Have a great rest of your day.